There are certain scores in bowling that are incredibly rare. Probably the hardest score to make would be 291, as you would need to go the first 11 strikes followed by a one count, which would mean taking either the 7 pin or the 10 pin out clean on the final shot. While it's possible, and I'm sure someone out there has done it, it's incredibly unlikely, especially on a PBA telecast. When a player misses out on a 300 game, the most common scores are 299, 298, 297 and even 296 can come up from time to time. But in this video, we're going to look at what I think is the most unusual score in a PBA telecast and that is the time that Anthony Pepe bowled a 295 game on TV. This game came during the start of the 2014 World Series of Bowling at the Cheetah Championship. Four bowlers made the TV show and Dick Allen was the one seed and would therefore go straight to the final match. But the other three players would all play one game with the highest score advancing to the final. Those three players were Brad Angelo, Anthony Pepe and Liz Johnson. Liz Johnson had already made some history just by making the TV show as this meant she was the first female bowler to make more than one PBA TV appearance. Her first came in 2005 when she lost out on a chance to become the first female to win a PBA title after losing to Tommy Jones. So let's take a look at the first game of these three bowlers competing for a spot in the final and we'll also break down what happened during Pepe's extraordinary game. Pepe and Angelo both started off strong but Liz Johnson left the big four in frame two for a very early open frame. The cheetah pattern is always extremely high scoring and it's quite possibly the highest scoring pattern used on the PBA so you really can't afford shots like this one especially when only one out of the three bowlers advance. There really is zero room for error and straight away she has some work to do to make sure she doesn't get quickly left behind. Both Pepe and Johnson are using IQ Tour Nanos and while Angelo does have one in his bag, he's actually using the strongest ball in his arsenal, a sinister. Angelo and Johnson start to leave some single pins and Johnson is still down in third place by 14. She has a chance to reduce this deficit working on a double but left a 10 pin. Angelo then went through the nose and left the 6-10 but meanwhile Anthony Pepe is just rolling along throwing strike after strike and gets the front seven and now has the finals firmly in his grasp. There isn't too much the other two bowlers can do at this point because Pepe has just been incredible making so many great shots. Both Angelo and Johnson did step up and throw strikes in the 8th and ninth frames but Pepe would not be stopped with a strike in the ninth, which secured his place in the final. Now he has one more task at hand and that's to finish the job with a perfect 300 game. Now bear in mind this is actually Pepe's debut TV appearance which just makes this game even more impressive and if you're wondering if anyone has shot a 300 on their TV debut well Bob Benoit did so in 1988 in the title match against Mark Roth. Pepe's 11th shot was pure and now it's just one shot left and as you can see this was definitely his worst shot of the lot as he tugged it way inside and left a five count for an unbelievable score of 295 and actually this could have easily been a 294 game as the 10 pin was standing but fell late. I couldn't find any records of a 295 game being bowled on TV there was a 296 which was bowled by Brian Goble in an incredible match against Norm Duke where Duke himself bowled a 280 but still lost the match and I have actually done a video about that entire match which you can watch by clicking the link above. So if anyone does know of another 295 or indeed a 294 or lower being bowled on TV let me know in the comment section below. So now let's move on to the final match and Pepe would have been incredibly disappointed not to get the 300 but he had bigger things to worry about with a title at stake. He would need to bring his A game once again to have a chance at taking down the one seed the tenacious Dick Allen. Allen started with a shot that went through the nose but did spare the 6-10 and Pepe carried right where he left off with the first three strikes. It's always tough for the one seed stepping in cold but Allen threw three in a row after his opening spare. Pepe struck in the fourth and then his fifth shot wasn't his best as he didn't quite push the ball out enough and left the 2-4-7 which he did manage to spare. So Allen is down by seven 
and has a chance to make it four in a row, but more importantly, take the lead. He does so and then builds on this with another strike for a lead of 13 pins. Suddenly the match has swung in Annan's favour and let's see how Pepe responds. Well, not very well. He does make the pocket and gets a little unlucky with a 7 pin that wobbles, although he can't complain as this is actually the first time that he's hit the pocket and not got a strike. But he actually went and missed the 7 pin and suddenly it seems the wheels have come off and he's down by 25 pins after 6. Pepe does strike in the 7th however and back over to Allen for a really nice shot floating it right out to the edge and it comes storming back to make it 6 in a row and inches him closer to the title. Now the ninth frame and when the ball is about halfway down the lane you can hear Allen asking the ball to push. He seemed to get the ball out to almost the right place but it looked to be the wrong angle certainly uh, a lot straighter than the previous shot and it was an absolute disaster with a four count and now a very very tricky conversion to deal with the three four six seven nine ten he only gets three and suddenly we have a match again with Annan's lead shrinking to 13 pins but Pepe can't really take advantage of this opening as he goes light on the right lane leaving a three pin and then high on the left for a four pin He's still in the match, but he would have loved to have really put some pressure on his opponent. Now Allen in the ninth, and he's really been trying to open up this pattern, but again, we can see it is working against him as he leaves another split this time. So back-to-back -back open frames, but he can still shut out Pepe with two strikes and an eight count in the tenth frame. And this shot that we see here was just a really horrendous break. He made a much better shot here, on the, on the left lane again and to leave a 7-10 here was incredibly harsh it was heartbreaking to see this happen especially after the two previous open frames and now Pepe just needed a mark to win his first ever PBA title and without any problems he strikes to win the 2014 Cheetah Championship well what a show this was a fantastic and incredibly unusual score from Pepe in game one and then a nail-biting title match that ended in heartbreak for Allen after a brutal break and jubilation for Pepe as he took home his first ever PBA title. And that will bring us to an end of today's video. Thank you all for watching and as always I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. Let me know uh, what the strangest score is that you've ever bowled. Perhaps you've got a, I don't know, 291 game, 293. Uh, I don't know maybe maybe there's someone out there who's done it so let me know in the comment section below and also let me know if there's any other classic PBA telecasts that you would like me to break down I really enjoyed watching this one again a brilliant first match um, you know with Pepe just blitzing the other two opponents and then an incredibly close and nail-biting title match that really looked like it was Allen's but that horrendous break in the 10th basically handed it over to Pepe for his first ever win but yeah a really really fun one today um, and hopefully we get some fantastic matches in the upcoming US Open which is now taking place um, as we speak so when the finals I think will be um, yeah, this coming weekend so I will do a video breaking down that entire telecast so keep your eyes open for that one once again thank you all for watching I hope you enjoyed this video and if you have I'd really appreciate it if you would just give me a little subscribe by clicking the subscribe button below. And as always, thank you bowling fans and see you all next time.